Hi everyone, my name is Sanjeev. In this video, I am going to talk about object store, how to configure the object store and how to use it. Object store is a key value storage in Mule application. We can store key value pair in object store and later point of time we can retrieve that information and we can use in our application logic. We can store information like watermark, we can store access token, we can store user information. Mule application also use the object store for their own component. For example, cache module store cache data in object store. OAuth module use the object store to store the access token and refresh token. Each Mule application has one default persistent object store and it is available without any configuration. But we can create custom object store as well and we can provide a specific configuration based on our specific requirement, a specific use case. Object store has some limitation. Object store does not support transactional access or modification. For example, if same key need to be modified in parallel, then object store should not be used. There are two kinds of object store, global object store and private object store. We define global object store as a global element and we can reference these object store inside the components. Global object store share the state across component. Global object store can share the state across cluster node as well. Private object store does not have reference name. They are defined for particular component for security reason and to prevent the other component to modify or manipulate the information inside the object store. For demo, I will move to the AnyPoint Studio now. In AnyPoint Studio, I have created a mule project OS-demo. In OS-demo, I have created a global object store. So let me show you the global object store. This is my global object store, my request object store. This is a persistent object store. Here I defined a max entries 20. That means it can store 20 entries. Entry TTL 4. That means it can contain the each entry till 4 unit and this is the unit that means it can contain each entry 4 hours and after 4 hours the entry will expire. Expirational interval that means when this uh, thread should run to check for expiration of the object store and this is a expiration interval unit minutes. So this is my global object store that I configured and I will use this global object store to demo the store operation, contains operation, retrieve operation, retrieve all operation and retrieve all keys operation. I also want to show you the example of private object store. Private object store is specific to the component. In this example, I am using idempotent message validator where I want to show you how to configure the private object store. Idempotent message validator need object store and we can configure object store value to none that means default object store of the mule application will be used we can configure global reference that means custom global object store can be used like my request object store we can use or we can use the 
private object store for that you need to select edit in line and here we need to provide the object store configuration for example max entry entry ttl and all those and this object store will only be used by add on protein message validator component only so this is an example of private object store now to show you the operation of object store i will go back to each and every flow so in the first flow i will store the value in the object store for that i have created a flow that have http listener as a source and i provided the resource name slash store i will pass the payload and from payload i am creating the key using payload dot request id and then i am using that key and storing whole payload as a key value entry in the object store and here i am selecting the custom global object store that we created that i just showed you and at the end i am transferring the hello to the json and returning back to the caller of the resource i will right click and run the project project is getting deployed to the embedded server project has been deployed now i will invoke this resource slash store to store a key value pair in object store so i will go back to the postman so i will use this resource slash store and here is the json payload that i'm going to store with the request id status request tab and detail i'm going to click send okay there is no error 200 okay that means we have saved the key value pair request id because we are using request id as a key for that key we are saving complete payload now i will invoke the contains method using slash contains resource here i will pass the request id as a query parameter and i will use object store contains method where i will pass the variable dot key and i will use the object store to check that if the value is exist or not so we saved the request id 100 just now now i will pass this request id 100 as a query parameter to see that if that value exists or not so i'm going to send this request okay we got the response true that means this value exists in the object store so let me recap here we got the request id and assigned to the key variable key and then i use the contains method and pass the key to check that if that key exists in the uh, my request object store or not and we got the response here and we converted the response in json and that's what we are getting here true that means that key exists now i will move to the third flow where i am actually retrieving that particular key to check that value of the uh, key value pair in the object store 
so I have created a flow with the resource retrieve. Here I am passing the request ID as a query parameter and assigning the request ID to the key variable. And then I am using object stores retrieve operation to get the value of the particular key. So I am using object store my request object store here. And whatever result we are getting from this operation, I am converting in a JSON and returning to column. So I am going to invoke now slash retrieve operation to see that what we have saved in, in a store operation. So I am going to call retrieve and passing request ID as Android. Okay, we got the result. So we got the payload that we send it actually in a store operation here. We send this one and we are getting back the same information. So we are using retrieve operation. So retrieve operation retrieving the same payload that we stored actually in the store operation. Now some other operation we can retrieve all the values that we saved so far using retrieve all. So I have created one another flow with the resource name retrieve dash all where I am retrieving all the values from the my request object store and then I am converting it in JSON and sending back to the caller. So let me store one more value. Now I will store 200 and I will say status our request is queued request type competition and detail is same so let me send this request so this information also saved in object store the status 200 so let me check that we have uh, saved it 200 or not so i'm retrieving the value passing the request id 200 so we got this response 200 now we have a uh, two key value pair in our object store and I will retrieve both of them with retrieve all operation. So I am going back to the postman and I am going to invoke retrieve all. Okay. We got both the key value pair. We have 100 and 200. Request ID 100, request ID 200. First one is status ingested. Second one is queued. So we got both the records. We can also retrieve all the keys available in the object store. For that, we need to invoke retrieve all keys. Let me show you the flow. This is the flow and this is the operation retrieve all keys. And I'm using that on object store, my request object store. And the resource name is retrieve all keys. And that's what I'm using retrieve all keys. Let me invoke it. So we got all the keys available in the object store 100 and 200 that's what we saved it so far now our object store as you know let me show you again is a persisted object store so object store tab is persisted that means if i will shut down this new application we should be able to see all the information in the object store still exist so let me go back to console and i will shut down this application okay now i will start again run the project project is 
getting redeployed. Okay, project has been redeployed. Now I will not save any information. I will not call this store operation because we already saved two of the key value pair in object store. They should be available. So I will call these operation to check that if that information is still available and it did not wiped out because of shutdown of the application and restart. So I'm going back to the postman and invoking this retrieve operation for request 200. Okay, we are able to see this information. Let me check 100. Okay, we got the 100 also, request ID 100 and associated value. Let me check consist request ID 100. Okay, let me check the resource name properly. Content, sorry. We should use contain. So I will use contain. Request ID 100. It's true. That means this value exists in object store. Let me try 200. This also exists. Let me invoke now retrieve all okay we got information again and retrieve all keys click send we are able to see that all the keys so because our object store is persisted it persists the information that's why shutdown of application and restart still kept the value in object store and we were able to get that information again back. This is all in this video. I hope you understood what object store is, what type of object store are there, and how to use the object store in our Mule application. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe the channel. Thanks for watching. Thank you very much.